What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today's gonna be a video about all my propagation bins. This has actually been a really popular request, so let's check it out. All right, so we got quite a bit of bins to go through here. Um, they've got a variety of all different kinds of plants. So let's just get started with this first one. This is one that you have seen in the past. This is my melanochrism bin, and this is just basically filled with melanochrism propagations. Well, sort of. These are actually all the mother plants that I took the original cuttings from. I guess these were propagations at one point, but again, these are much older, more, ma not mature, but they've been around a lot longer than the other bin that you're going to see pretty soon. But they're pretty darn healthy in here, even though they're all tangled up, and they've been living in this bin for probably like two years. Because of the high humidity in this bin, they just root right in the air, and it makes it really easy to take cuttings and get them rooted because they've already got roots. So I really like the bin for that aspect. Let's move on to the second melanochrism bin. This one is all the cuttings I took maybe a year ago, and they're growing up pretty good, but they are looking a little weird. You may have noticed already, but they're more orange than green compared to the first bin. I'm not really sure if it's because it's too wet in here or they're not getting enough light or what's going on, but for whatever reason, in this spin they stay pretty orange and sometimes bright pink i think it's pretty cool just to see the variety of colors but i'm pretty sure that's not normal eventually i'm going to do another great propagation of these and the previous spin and we should have at least 100 150 nodes growing and then from that point i'm going to start selling cuttings i know i've told you this for like a year but things took a little longer to grow because i haven't been able to give them the attention they need based on like the move i made the child i had and just life in general but soon soon tm these things will actually be for sale and they'll be cheap i mean they're already getting pretty cheap anyways this next bin is probably the oldest bin and it's the first bin i believe there's actually a video dedicated to this one too as well so this is just proof that plants can live in these things almost indefinitely although some don't do very well this one actually has a variety of plants. It's mostly tetrasperma. This is from, I think, my original tetrasperma too, so it's pretty cool. It's really taken over. There's tons of nodes and roots in here, but I've also got a few other species. There are a few small melanochrisms in here. There's a uh, varicosum. I think there's even the one pothos, like satin, jade, or whatever they call. I think I've also got a few shingle plants in here. I've got some peacock moss. There's some sphagnum moss in here, and there's just whatever random nodes I chuck in at any given time. Again, this one's probably been around for two years, maybe. I'm I'm not sure. The time is just kind of flying by. But there's even like slime mold on the edge or on the sides. So it's been there. It's a very seasoned propagation bin. But again, it's been going pretty long term, pretty successfully. I really should get the plants out of here and pot them up. But there's just so many chores to do and so little time. All right, this is probably my favorite bin. This is a more recent one, and it has such a cool variety of plants. Let's check it out. From the wide shot, you can see there's an incredible plant diversity in here. I've got all types of stuff just growing everywhere, along with that pesky grass that often comes with the dang sphagnum moss once you leave it in there long enough. I don't know how, but the seeds survive everything, and no matter what package I open up and get wet, the grass always appears. Some of the ones that I can identify right away is going to be a Dark Lord. I got one of these from a friend on Instagram. It's growing beautifully in here. I do have some Gloriosum in here. Rather large, actually. But I do need to get them potted up pretty soon because they've grown quite large at this point. They did take a while, but they're doing well now. I've got some terrarium plants in here. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's really spread everywhere. I think I have a dedicated video about these. If not, I'll make it, but it's a really cool plant and I love how it vines almost everywhere. I do have some begonia in here. I forget the exact name, but I'll put it on screen. I've got some philodendron mame in here or mommy AI. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, there's just really all kinds of stuff in here. Right behind the mame is the Burlmark Fantasy. I had to look that one up quick. This one's doing okay, but I think it can get much bigger. This was sold to me in a terrarium plant package, so I gotta get it out and pot it up pretty soon. Again, here's some more of that begonia. It's really spread all over. I haven't cut it or anything. It just kind of keeps growing around, but it's pretty neat. And again, it's another one that I gotta pot up. Pretty much everything in here I need to pot up, but it's just not a lot of time. There's some varicosum in here as well, doing pretty decent. And there is a dark queen, I believe it's called. 
Um, it's similar to the Dark Lord, so it's another kind of neat sister plant, or I don't know what you want to call it, but it's another one that needs to be potted up, but it's doing pretty well in here so far. There's a huge uh, philodendron pasta zanum, I believe is how you pronounce it, chunk in the back, and it's put out a pure white leaf. I don't know if that's because it formed while I had it out from under the lights when I was doing some moving, but it could be something weird, I don't know, but I'm looking forward to it. There's also some Margravia in here and just a lot of other stuff. I guess you can probably see why I really love this bin, just because there's such a variety in there and it's just fun to dig around and see how it's all going. This next bin has a pretty good variety of plants too. I made this one with the full intent to pot everything up to really start multiplying my plant collection. But again, time just got in the way and it's just been doing its own thing for probably about six months now. And let's take a look and see where everything's at. We'll start off with the bootleg Gabby. I actually just put some, uh, I believe it's philodendron Brazil or, or the Hartley philodendron Brazil variety. I put them in here and they immediately started getting these really like large white variegated patterns on them. I don't know if it has something to do with like nutrition or being in too humid environments, but if you want to make some bootleg gabbies, this is definitely the way to do it. I do have a lot of shingle plants in here. I know one of them is Raphidophora. Hey, hi, hey, hi, I don't know. Yeah, it's the Raphidophora hey. The other one that's a little harder to tell is also the Raphidophora cryptantha. The leaves got pretty small when I tried to propagate it. I definitely need to get it out of this bin and I bet they'll get pretty big pretty quick. There's also a bunch of Cebu blue cuttings that have now become Cebu green cuttings. Again, I got another video all about what's happening in these prop bins that's going to be like revelational, but until I put that out, I can't really explain it well. So anyways, things in the prop bin, they don't do well after a certain amount of time. But there's also some Raphidophora uh, tetrasperma in here. Pretty much a lot of Raphidophora in here. This next bin has been a little bit of an experiment. It's definitely an atypical one. And let's take a look why. I don't know if you can tell from the zoomed out version, but the bottom is not sphagnum moss. It's actually just potting soil and a bunch of leaf litter. There's nothing really special to this one as far as substrate. I just wanted to try something different that's way cheaper because sphagnum moss can add up quickly. The star of this prop in is really the Piper Crocatum. I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's a really beautiful plant. In here, it's kind of suffering from some sort of deficiency. It's very pale, but when they aren't pale, they're absolutely beautiful. They have these bright pink metallic veins and the leaves are much darker. So I'm gonna get this thing out and healthy pretty soon, but I just wanted to actually propagate the nodes. I was struggling in other environments. The other plant that's in here is a really mature Margravia. This thing was like practically a, like a woody tree at one point. And now I'm finally getting some smaller growths out of it. And they're pretty neat. They got nice pink tips as they grow. And I can't wait to get this in a terrarium somewhere because I think it'll be pretty cool. There are some random string of turtles in here that are suffering. And then a lot of dead leaves from stuff I've been trying to prop in here, but just wasn't successful. Well guys, that pretty much sums up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And for those of you that were really looking forward to this, hope it met your expectations. I know some of those propagation bins were almost like two years old and they're still going strong. Some other ones, the plants that have been in there for maybe only a few months are starting to suffer. I've, like I said, I've got a whole video dedicated to this. There's a really important concept I gotta teach you guys about. I learned about it recently and it makes a lot of sense for what I've been seeing in all my propagation bins. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, may your plants grow strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.